Hi everyone, welcome to our online sign making program. This is Jersey Shore Paint Party. We're located in Brick, New Jersey. And if you need a kit, you can always find us at jerseyshorepaintparty.com. So you should have received your kit in the mail and it will have these items in it. Sandpaper, dabbers, your board stain, lettering paint, the sponge, the distressing rag, a scraper, your hanger for when you're through, and some rubber, actually vinyl gloves. And also your stencil and your wood. So our first step is sanding the wood and that needs to be done very well. You will be sanding with the grain, which is the way the lines go. The easiest way is to take your sandpaper, fold it in half, and kind of use it, uh, just use your palm to push it back and forth. Now, you can think of your board in sections, one, two, three, four, and you wanna sand each section and make sure you get the whole board because it needs to all be sanded. This is so the stain will get into the wood better and also so that later on, your stencil adheres properly and you don't have any paint leaking underneath the stencil. So this is considered one. So you need to do 25 of those each section of the board. So I'm going to start one, two, three, four, five. You're gonna to go to 25. So you need to stop the video and get your sanding done. Okay, welcome back. You should have your board completely sanded by now. If you've dusted it off, that's great. If you haven't, kind of dust it off and smack it a little bit to make sure you get everything out of it. So we are working with the grain again for this step and you will need your uh, the board stain that came with your kit. Just open up the top with that and we are going to use the sponge to stain the board. I'm going to squeeze out some of this. Actually we're using paint for this antique white finish. Uh, to stain the board and we are scrubbing it in with the grain you will notice that it doesn't soak completely in so you want to really scrub it in use some muscle we want this to get into the wood not just sit on top so I'm going to continue to scrub that a bit if you want to put a second coat on, since you're at home and you have the time to wait, you may put a second coat. You want to wait about 10 to 15 minutes between coats at least. So I am scrubbing this in, make sure it's really into my wood well. I can still see my grain, which is the beauty of the wood. I'm going to get a little bit more on my sponge we don't want to forget the edges I'm going to scrub those in okay so you do all four sides so one side may be a little rough so you just kind of rub that in a little harder where they cut the lumber okay get the other side I'm gonna add a little bit more So you have the whole board covered now. Whole board is stained. And we are going to let that dry. So you can turn off your video, finish your step, let it dry a little bit, and then we'll be moving on to the next step. The board is completely dry now, so I'm working on the distressing step. Your distressing rag is 
actually cheesecloth soaked in black paint. And you're going to open it up and kind of uh, hold it loosely in your hand. And depending on how much distressing you like, you may put a little or a lot. And we're just applying it by lightly swiping the rag across the board. You also want to swipe your edges so everything matches. Now, some people like to make the edge look like it has kind of like a burnt effect. So to do that, you would pull inward from the edge. And remember, anything I do now will be lighter because we do have another sanding step. So I'm going to add a little more here. So I really want this to be an antique white look. And this is one of the things that will create that look. If you really want it to look more rustic, you can keep going. You can make this as, as dark as you'd like. Okay, so I'm done with that. We're gonna let this dry a little bit because we do have another uh, stand, sanding step to complete after this. And we're gonna just have a little dry time, maybe have a drink, get a snack, and then we'll get right back to it. Now that your sign has been completely stained and distressed and it has dried, we are going to grab our sandpaper again and we're going to sand this uh, about six to eight times depending on how much you grain you want to pull out so a minimum of the six to the eight and then if you want to do more you want to really lighten up your board you can continue so now I'm going to just swipe off some of that to show you the difference what it looks like be before the sanding and after. I'm going to finish it up. If you want to lighten it up more, you can just continue. If you want to make it look a little more beat up. See how beautiful the grain is coming out. You could put a little beat up edge look by just sanding the edges down a little bit. And even just going around the complete edges. So now we want to get all that dust out of the board. Okay, and we are ready for applying the stencil. The stencil is actually three parts. There's a back layer of paper that gets peeled off. There's also a plastic sheet on top of the stencil that eventually is removed. And the stencil itself is in between the plastic and the black back backing sheet. So to, if this were just a sticker, we would just eh, peel the back off, stick it down and peel off the plastic, but it's not. It can be damaged and you could also pull up some of the letters and th then they might be out of place. So the way we do take off the back is by getting it started and I'm getting it started evenly. I'm just getting the white paper away from the blue. Remember, it's only the white that you want to see coming up. And I'm going to kind of pull it over as if I were going to put a fold in it, but I'm not. I'm letting that just roll. I'm sliding it with my hand and I'm keeping my hand flat and pressing as I slide. So I'm pressing and sliding at the same time. If you pull it, it may pull up some of the letters. If, if a letter did come up, you just push down the paper and push, push it down with the white paper. So again, I'm just gonna slide it off. 
there you go there's a piece that came off what I'm gonna do is just press back onto the, the blue with that and it's back down okay once you have the backing off we're gonna turn it around and don't worry about getting it perfect on the board because it will not stick until you put pressure on it so you could just kind of let it move around the board using the corners you can adjust it if you want it a little off balance you can do that in most cases you'll balance it once it's where you want it you'll brush from the center out make sure it's down well and then you'll use your scraper to finish. Make sure it has a good connection. And I'm not really pressing hard on this. On a scale of, you know, one to 10, I'm just doing like a three or a four. This, our goal is to get this stencil off as quickly as possible. We don't want to pull off um, any of the finish. So once we get that all in place, we are going to get a corner started of the plastic. Now, if the plastic gives you a problem on one corner, just switch to another corner. So I'm going to do the same thing with this basically as I did with the backing paper. Just going to get it started evenly. So I'm just pulling it across like that. If your blue pops up, just push it back down with your finger. Okay. Don't use the scraper on just the blue because it's a little uh, more fragile than it is with the plastic on. So you might find this is a little stiff to pull, but just pull it straight back. I'm gonna hold here and pull it back. And that basically completes the suction of the stencil, keeping it on. Okay, so we are ready to paint. So we're all ready to paint, and I have my colors ready, and I have my dabbers. Now if you put the dabber like this, it stands up. And that's the part you're gonna hit the wood with, this part. So you're gonna kinda hold it like this, and squish it down straight. And when you do hit the wood, you're not hitting it like lightly like this, you're hitting it. You wanna get it with a firm hit, pounce. Okay, so I'm gonna put those there for now. I'm gonna need a paper plate, and I always start with the lighter color and work to the darker, so if you make a mistake, you can always cover it over with the next color. So you don't need a lot of paint, it's not a good idea to have a lot of paint on your dabber. I'm going to dab into that, and I'm dabbing it into the dabber itself, so it's more like a stamp pad. And then I start, and it's straight up and down. I'm hitting the board hard to make sure that it gets in the whole letter. And again, I'm dipping and dabbing away again on my plate. When you're painting this, when you're dabbing it with the dabber, by the time you're finished, you should be dry enough within five or ten minutes to take this off. If you have paint, extra paint on the stencil, just kind of dab it away so that it's helping it dry as well. Okay, so again, I need some more dabbing. The reason you really want to hit it hard is because you don't want to miss the corners of the letters or anywhere and then it curves any of the, the corners so as long as you're hitting it firmly enough it's going to fill up the whole letter and you won't have any missing 
areas. You want to kind of look as you're going if there's any blotchy spots. I might go back. And if I see any areas where there's paint kind of hanging around on the vinyl, I'm just going to take that and dab it away. Okay. So if you are using more than one color, you'll grab your second color. Most colors will cover in one coat. If you need an, another coat, just go over it again. I'm going to color the arrows with the black. you want to be careful of some signs may have maybe close to the edge so if you're dabbing something close to the edge make sure you don't go too far and dab on your wood okay so I'm hitting this a little harder because it was not covering and I went over my letter there a little bit okay so I'm gonna give this about five minutes uh, 10 minutes at the most and it should be dry. Now that our paint has dried and we're ready to remove the stencil and I did everything before with the grain and now I'm going to take the stencil off against the grain. I'm going to try the best I can to take it off that way. It will rip. It's supposed to rip. Uh, you don't have to try to take this off all in one piece. So to get started I'm using my scraper to just pull it and I'm pulling it down this way, which is against the grain, because my grain is going this way now. Okay. And as you're working on this, you just kind of keep getting an edge with your scraper. And hopefully you didn't squish it down too tight. Uh, this is kind of the final distressing step. Um, it will give the wood a little uh, beat up look as well. You might get some light splintering and that actually will look authentic like a real antique sign. And you're just going to continue taking off these big pieces. You don't want to scrape over your letter with the scraper. You want to work it so that you're always going under the plastic without scraping over a letter. You want to get all the big stuff off. Now, I'm almost done with all the outer kind of areas, and it's just leaving the parts that are inside the letters, like these little the Z, inside the E's and things like that. And I'm going to do those last. I want to get out whatever else I can first. Okay. You want to be real sure that your letters have dried before doing the final scrape for the insides of the letters. So when I'm using this, I'm really trying to keep it as flat as possible to move under the plastic without digging into the wood. So just like that. So I'm bringing it and sliding it and it is pulling the plastic right up nice and easy. But again, you wanna to remember to do this after you've let it completely dry. Don't take any chances on scraping up your letters. Again, and it seems to help if you start at the pointy end, if there is a pointy end. And it just comes up that easy. Get my last piece there. And once you're finished 
scraping. You want to make sure you have a nice clean area. You're going to turn it upside down. I'm going to take my sawtooth hanger and I'm going to press it lightly with my thumbs, then turn it and press down from the other side and that'll put it right in. And there you go. Your sign is all ready to hang and admire. If you need any help or you have any questions, you can always give us a call or text to 732-804-5015. You can DM us on Facebook or you can send us an email at jerseyshorepaintparty at gmail.com. Thank you again for supporting us and ordering your kit and hopefully we will see you soon in studio uh, in the future. Thank you. Bye-bye.